I'm sure most of you are aware of the recent television special that claimed to give an honest, candid, and revealing look into the private life of one of the world's most successful and controversial celebrities, Michael Jackson. The revelations were explosive. The ratings were enormous. But Michael has claimed that what TV journalist Martin Bashir presented was a twisted and edited construction of scandal and innuendo, not a true representation of the interviews that actually took place. In the next two hours, we're going to give you an opportunity unprecedented in the history of television. We're going to show you footage that was never intended to be broadcast. Tonight, the private video from Michael's own cameras. Cameras that shot the Michael Jackson interview. The footage you were never meant to see. As much as I do not speak about my family, I will. Right now. For the first time, Michael's ex-wife speaks out in public. My kids don't call me mom because I don't want them to. You'll find out what really happened during the astonishing incidents with his children in Germany. And, and I've seen you know better. people that flip their kids up in the air, do somersaults and catch them. To be honest with you, I think wait another four or five years, the kids will come in front of a camera and they will defend their daddy. You'll hear about Michael's childhood. One of the things uh, I can see this man tried to do, he tried to, to pin something on me where I was real brutal. You'll find out how Michael really feels about his father. He doesn't know this, but... I walk in the room, and his presence would be there, and I would faint. You'll hear about Michael's surgery that the other special didn't mention. The total top of his head caught fire, right in front of my eyes. You'll hear the truth behind Michael's children and their disguises. Michael's very proud of his children. I'm the one who's terrified. You'll go behind the rumors of the Neverland Ranch. I'd never do that. I was spit my wrist in front of hurt. And find out how those rumors have driven a family from their home. Gavin called me. He was crying on the phone. He went in gas station. The kids in gas station, they start kidding. Oh, you are the kid doing this with Michael. You slept in Michael. They ruined this kid's life. You'll hear from the people closest to Michael. I've heard um, someone say on the television that no one should be allowed behind those gates at Neverland, especially true. the children. They don't even know what they're talking about. Plus, a surprise revelation from the man behind the Michael Jackson interviews. There'll be a lot of controversy about this. This is tabloid stuff. Well, you, you're beyond this. Uh, I know. You're respected well. Girls. All tonight on the Michael Jackson interview. The footage you were never meant to see. Hosted by Maury Povich. With Mr. Bashir's full knowledge, Michael had his own behind-the-scenes camera documenting the major interviews. The quality of the audio and video may be a bit raw at times, but it will enable you to see and hear the interviews as they actually happen, and will allow you, the viewing audience, to draw your own conclusions. And while Michael Jackson has provided this footage to us, he has absolutely no control over the editorial content of this program. But who is Martin Bashir? And how did he get an exclusive interview with one of the most reclusive pop stars the world has ever known? In 1995, this little-known British journalist caused an uproar when his sensational interview with Princess Diana revealed details of her extramarital affair. Since then, he has scored interviews with some of England's most notorious newsmakers becoming somewhat of a celebrity himself. Martin, a quick word for the evening news. His interview with Jackson was, as he put it, a request to show me the real man. But show me everything. Make nothing off limits. Michael agreed. And the first interview was scheduled for the summer of 2002. In these photos of one of Bashir's interviews with Jackson, you can see the camera that captured the footage you were never meant to see. It's mounted right there on the light stand. This is the view it was capturing at the last interview. And this is the shot from the very first interview at Neverland. The man adjusting the lens. Now this is on. Okay. So can we have silence in the house? Yeah. Is Jackson's own documentary cameraman. Well, I just wanted to clarify that um, is not. It, it was not a secret video, because right now they're saying that we were secretly videotaping him. But that's not the truth. Uh, Mr. Bashir saw me you know, hooking up the camera, 
and um, <clears throat> you know everybody saw the camera out there and we were just rolling it. We usually do documentary on every you know things that Mr. Jackson does. Do you think that your success has actually made people turn against you? The bigger the star, the bigger the target. And the more popular I became, the more rumors that were created, which none of which were true. I mean, the moment I started breaking the all-time records of the biggest selling albums of all time, they called me weird overnight, strange, wacko, you know, um, they said I'm a girl, um, homosexual, um, uh, he wants to buy the elephant man bones, he sleeps in a hyperbaric chamber, none of that stuff is true. All completely made well, up. I've seen it's where you all sleep. all a lie. I've seen where you sleep, exactly. and it's not a hyperbaric chamber. I sleep in a bed. I mean, people would be so surprised how normal and simple the way I live. Most people would have a very hard time thinking Michael Jackson's life was normal or simple. Maybe it's that ranch north of Santa Barbara, California, the 3,000 acres he calls Neverland. Neverland is an extraordinary, a breathtaking, a stupendous, an exhilarating, an amazing place. I can't gather together words to describe Neverland. What inspired you to make a home like this? What inspired me? It was so easy because it was me being myself, creating things that I love. And what I love, kids happen to love, or the child that lives inside, the adult happens to love, you know? It is so easy because um, I'm just putting behind the gates everything I never got to do when I was a kid. Do you have regrets about the way your life has been? Somewhat. And what do you regret? I was really little, uh, 11 and 12. I was under contract with Motown, and and I would have to go to the recording studio. I had to go and make these albums because the summer tour was right around the corner, and right across the street from the recording studio was a ballpark, and I could hear the kids, you know, the roar of the crowd and playing and catching ball and having fun and playing tennis. And some of those times I so passionately wanted to just go over there and just play a little bit and not go to the recording studio and sing. Just to, you know, have some fun with the kids. And I couldn't. say, why is he always with children? Well, I was raised in a world with adults. I, the kids were playing in, in bed sleeping night. I was up doing clubs. I was doing club dates, three in the morning. The strip tease would come on after us. You know, I was, uh, we were performing. And we, we weren't, we didn't have friends. My brothers were like my friends, but we, we worked, we worked, we worked. There was no Christmas. My birthdays and we very strict Jehovah Witnesses. So I'm compensating. Nature make makes sure that I compensate for the lost. So when you come be behind my gates, you'll see amusement parks, you'll see animals, you'll see everything I never got to do. There's candy everywhere. <laughs>